Hey everyone, Nina here from NB and NS and happy Friday. Um, today we are going to be talking about Facebook groups. Now, Facebook groups is probably one of the top things that I get asked about in our webinars and on our Facebook page and in our Facebook and our private Facebook group. So I wanted to do a live today to talk about a few things about Facebook groups and also to take your questions about Facebook groups. So as I go through this live today, please feel free to put any questions that you have in the comments below, or if you are watching this on the replay, feel free to also put your questions in the comments below and I will come back and answer them. Now I'm gonna refresh my screen over here to make sure that I am seeing all of your comments because sometimes Facebook doesn't like to show it to me on my phone and I'm actually gonna go ahead and share this into our private Facebook group um, so our group there can follow along. So if you'll bear with me just a second, um, it takes just a few seconds to do that. And um, I'm gonna share in group, group name. We have our private group, it's called Marketing for Mompreneurs. There is a link in the description of this live. So if you wanna join our private group, we would love to have you in that group. Um, you just have to answer one little question before you join. It's a new feature that Facebook allows you to do to ask group members questions before they join. So you just have to answer that and then you will be given access to join the group. All right, so it looks like we're all good. So the things that I'm gonna talk about today are I'm gonna talk about a Facebook group versus a Facebook page what they are and what you should be posting in each. That's probably one of the biggest challenges we have with our students is they're not sure what kind of content they should be posting on their Facebook page versus what kind of content they should be posting in their group. So we're gonna talk about that. The second thing we're gonna talk about is if you actually need a Facebook group. So we're gonna address some of the questions we get um, on that topic. Three, we're gonna address what your group should be about and how to decide how to lead your group and the topics and the things that you talk about in your Facebook group and how that differs from your Facebook business page. And then how to get engagement once you have your Facebook group set up or if you already have a Facebook group, how you can kind of re revive a group that feels a little bit dead. And then finally, how to grow your group. That's another question that we get quite often. Um, a lot of direct sales consultants seem to get a big boost when they first open their group. And then it really doesn't grow beyond that. So we're gonna talk about how to grow your group. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and get started with our first topic. And that is what a Facebook group versus a Facebook page is and what you should be posting on each of those. And I'm gonna just pull up my notes disappeared on that. So I want to make sure I pull that up. All right. So your Facebook page, your Facebook page, you need to think about it as your storefront. So what you're going to be posting here are things about your business, helping people get to know your business and your brand and your personality. Um, you know, you have to think about people, who are coming to your Facebook business page are your top of funnel. They probably don't know much about you or they probably don't know much about your company or your brand or the products that you're selling. So the type of content that you wanna post on your Facebook business page is really gonna help um, people get to know a little bit about you and your brand and kind of make that decision to get more information and to continue to interact with you. So when you're thinking about um, what kind of things you want to post on your Facebook business page is you want to post things like how, you know, show how much of your product to use or if so if you sell skincare, how much of your eye cream and face wash should they be get should they use? What kind of ingredients should they look for when they're looking at skincare for the type of problems that they're looking for? It's really the kind of things that if you had a storefront and somebody walked into your boutique, what are the questions that they're going to ask? They're going to ask you, you know, what's your store all about? What kind of things do you carry? I'm looking for this item today. How can you help me find this product? These are the problems that I have. What do you have here in your store that can solve those problems for me? And they wanna get a feel too, like do they wanna buy from you? Do you say hello when they walk into your store? Are you friendly? Do you smile at them? Do they feel like they can trust you? Do they feel like they relate to you? 
So you want to focus on the type of content that's going to help address all of those things on your Facebook business page. So your focus here is going to be value and engagement. So your content needs to provide value to your potential clients and customers, and it needs to be engaging enough that they want to learn more about your product, they want to engage more, and they want to start to consider to purchase. This is something that we talk about in our funnel training. Your business page is kind of your top of funnel. This is where people are just learning about you and they're just learning about your brand and they don't know a lot, and this is a great place for them to get to know you, get to know your products, and get to know your brand so that they will move on to the next stage of the funnel. So when you are thinking about your Facebook group, people in your Facebook group are going to be lower in your funnel. So you can be a little bit more familiar in your Facebook group. So you can show a little bit more of your personality. We absolutely want you showing your personality on your Facebook business page. But in your Facebook group, you can be a little bit more familiar because these folks have, you know, decided that they learned enough about you through your Facebook business page or at an event that they like you enough that they want to be part of your group. So you can be a little bit more familiar there. Um, you want your content to be a little more customer service um, oriented because maybe they've purchased from you before and they're thinking about purchasing again. You want to make your Facebook group a place that people want to hang out. They want to meet other people. They want to talk about their passions. They want to talk about ideas of how to use the products. They want to feel like it's a party and they're communicating amongst friends. You really want to make sure that in your Facebook group, you're cultivating that, that feeling of community and people want to be there. There's a lot of talk um, in the marketing world about social media being a third place. So your home would be your first place, like, and then, then a coffee shop would be like a second place, and social media is a third place. And that third place is where people go to meet like-minded people, to talk about the things they wanna talk about and find out more information about the things that they are interested in. And so you want to kind of create your group as a community that people wanna hang out in. Your group is not a place to sell, okay? It's going to sell by creating that good feeling of community and that trust. So it's not like a place where you get to sell, sell, sell. It is a place where you can get continued sales because in a group you get more visibility. You are not as subject to the Facebook algorithm as you are with a business page. Although I am seeing changes in groups that we are going to be more subject to the algorithm in groups. So just keep that in mind. But you want your group to be you know, a place that people want to be. So to give you an example real quick of the content that you would post on your page versus in your group, but it's a similar piece of content. So in your group, ask your group members their favorite way to use one of your products or how to wear one of your products because hopefully they love your products. That's why they're in your group. They love the topic that your product fits into. And so they will give you lots of answers. Maybe they'll find out new ways from other people that answer. They'll be like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about using it that way. And then take that content, take those answers, and maybe do a Facebook Live or create a video for your Facebook business page about the top 10 or 15 ways to use this particular product. And so do you see the difference there? So you ask the question for the ideas from your group because these should be a little bit more familiar with your products. They should be a little bit more passionate about your products. And so you posted something that they got interaction with and you crowdsourced, which means you got ideas that you could use content for your business page. And then so you took all of that content, which was helpful in of, uh, in of itself to your group members because they were sharing and swapping those ideas of how they like to use your product. And then you packaged it together to for your business page to just tell people the top 10 most popular ways to use your product. So I hope you see kind of the difference there. It's the same type of content, but it's a little bit different um, for each of those platforms. So just an idea to think about. All right. So moving on, I'm gonna make sure I refresh my screen here. If you're here, I would love for you to say hello. Let me know what kind of company you're with because as I'm going through these, I always like to try to incorporate different ideas from the companies 
um, that you are with. So say hello, tell me what you saw, uh, which company you're with, and I'll try to incorporate those if possible as I go through this. So, all right. So do you need a Facebook group? And I absolutely think that if you have the time to dedicate it to it, yes, you should have a Facebook group. And I'm going to back up on that a little bit. So when I say if you have the time to dedicate to it, something that I always tell our students is that if you are overwhelmed and you're like, I don't know, should I be doing Facebook? Should I have a Facebook business page? Should I have a Facebook group? Should I do Instagram? Should I do Pinterest? What I usually tell people is to choose one or two and just rock that one. Do it well. Like just pick that one and dedicate to dedicate it dedicate yourself to it and do it as well as possible because if you spread yourself too thin and then you're kind of just dipping your toes in each of those you're really not going to see the results that you want to see because you're not truly dedicated to it and i know that social media can be really overwhelming when you're first starting out so pick one thing really dive into it do it well and then move on to the next thing okay so don't have a facebook page and a facebook group and an Instagram account, and a Pinterest account, and a blog, if you truly don't think you can handle all of those things. I have really had to learn as an entrepreneur to choose one thing and focus on that because otherwise I'm spread too thin and I'm not getting anything done and I'm not gaining any headway on anything. So, um, you know, choose one and choose it well. So do you need a Facebook group? And I really, really like Facebook groups because they add, like I said, that sense of community. They're gonna add a sense of loyalty to your customers and your potential customers when they feel like they have a place to go online and talk about something that they're passionate about. Now, something that I think a lot of direct sellers do incorrectly, and it's okay, we can correct it, and it's probably because no one's told you, but you should really create your group around a topic that your ideal customers are interested in. And so I don't want you to create your group specifically to sell. I want you to create your group around a topic that your ideal customers are passionate about. So what I mean, if you sell, I see that I have a couple um, Senegents uh, distributors here today. So if you sell Senegents or LipSense, I know it's both, um, I want you to create a group around makeup or passionate about lipstick um, and talk about all things in that topic. Don't just talk about your product, but talk about the latest trends that magazines are talking about. Talk about lip care, talk about skin care, talk about how to choose the best colors for you. I don't want you just to talk about your product. I want you to talk about the topic that your ideal customers are passionate about, okay? And there is a difference. Another idea that I had is if you sell Pampered Chef and maybe you really love to bake, well, create a group around all things baking. Maybe you like the British Baking Show and you can talk about that and you can talk about things that you've learned with baking. And oh, by the way, you have these really great pans that are great for baking or these really great cookie sheets all of these different things that you can incorporate and talk about your products, but your group is not focused on selling. It is not focused on your product. It's focused on the topic that your ideal customers are passionate about and how you can help them with that and how you can facilitate that conversation. For example, we have a private group called Marketing for Mompreneurs. And in that group, we like to talk about um, social media in general and marketing your business in general and the challenges that come with being a mompreneur. We, I don't talk very often about the products that I sell in that group. If somebody asks a question and I think one of my products can answer that problem, then yeah, I absolutely talk about it. But that group is there to support each other, to bounce ideas off of each other and solve the problems that we have as mompreneurs, okay? So it's not focused on selling, it's focused on the topic that my ideal customer needs help with. So that's the difference. So 
Do you need a Facebook group? If you have the time for it, I think it's a great way to create loyalty, to create repeat sales, and to create that feeling of community. And it's also a great place, like I said, to crowdsource. So for instance, we have a new webinar coming out in a few weeks all about Facebook parties. And so I crowdsource the topic name for that webinar. And crowdsourcing means getting the opinion of the crowd. And so I posted about four or five different ideas that I had about how to title that webinar and got feedback from my group members. And I chose the winner of that, um, what they voted on through the polls, and that's the name of the webinar. And so they helped me. Um, you know, we offer a lot of help in there, so we exchange a lot of ideas. All right, so number three, what should your group be about? And I kind of just kind of uh, touched on this um, in the last topic, which it should be about what your ideal customer is passionate about. It should um, involve, you know, what your product is about, but it should be about what your, what your people are passionate about. And I'm sorry, I see a question um, from Whitney. And should you allow others to sell, promote in your group? I don't. I have a very specific rule in my group that you cannot sell. Um, it is my group, I host it, so I do talk about my products, but I don't allow other people to sell um, in my group. I know that's pretty much the, um, the norm for most groups, is that you don't allow other people to sell. Now a special case may be that maybe um, I see that you sell Beauty Counter, Whitney. So maybe there's another company or another product that you want to invite in and have another consultant come in and talk about their product um, as like a special event or something. I could see you doing something that way. Um, but I usually don't allow other people to come in and promote and sell. It is in my guidelines. You can create guidelines for your group. Um, and I actually have a... Um, question that people have to ask before they join the group when they before they join they have to promise that they won't promote because I want it to be a helpful atmosphere I don't want it to be a spammy salesy promotional atmosphere so that's kind of my take on that um, you know it really depends what you want your group to be about and what your group members are open to uh, so just keep that in mind but usually that's my rule is I don't allow other people to promote and sell in my group you're welcome. Okay, I'm glad I could answer your question. Um, and as I go through this, like I said, if you guys have questions, please ask. I'm sure other people, Whitney, had that same question, so thank you for asking that. All right, where was I? So what should your group be about? Okay, so like I talked about, it should be something that your ideal customer is passionate about. So like Whitney, in your case, with Beauty Counter, I know that you guys are very you know, natural product focused, so you could really hone in on natural living, um, living chemical free, things like that, or, you know, just about eco-friendly makeup, different things like that, that you know that your ideal customers are passionate about. Now, what you want to make sure is make sure that all of the content that you post in your group is useful, it's valuable, it's engaging, it's not salesy, it's not spammy, it gives your ideal customers a reason to come back and want to engage in your group. So just keep that in mind. So now that you have your Facebook group, now that you've chosen your topic, how do you get engagement? And I know a lot of folks um, come to me and they're like, I built my group the wrong way. I have a ton of members. I'm not getting any engagement. How can I revive engagement in my group? So this will help you if that's the case as well. So first of all, and I say this with everything that we teach, but you really need to hone in on your ideal client. You need to know her. You need to know what drives her to buy a product like yours. What other products does she buy like yours? Where does she shop? How does she get information? Who does she trust for information? How old is she? Where does she live? Does she work? What kind of car does she drive? There are so many things that you can figure out about an ideal client. And something that I suggest because I know that you all can't afford to hire a research company um, to tell you who your ideal client is, but go out and look at companies similar to yours. Now, Whitney, I'll come back to Beauty Counter because I actually helped a student of ours with this, is that she knew that people who buy Beauty Counter tend to um, buy products at Whole Foods. And then she also knew that you know, Chanel would be a higher end item that maybe they'd be interested in, maybe not because Chanel's not a clean company, 
Um, so I kind of directed her to looking at other clean, um, higher end cosmetic companies. And there's companies like Jane Iredale, I don't think I ever say that right, um, and Ela, and there's a couple other brands I can't think of right now. But go and look at those brands similar to you because they spend millions of dollars figuring out who their ideal client is. And if you can find a brand that's similar, go in and look at what they're posting on social media. Look at their ads, look at their website. If they have a blog, read their blog. And you can somewhat read between the lines and figure out who they're trying to appeal to. Are they trying to appeal to career women? Are they trying to appeal to moms? Um, you know, are they trying to appeal to stay at home moms? You can kind of tell through the content that your competitors are using to help you define your ideal client a little bit. The other way that you can find your ideal client is ask your best customers some questions. Say, hey, you know, how did you hear about me in the first place? You know, what are some of the struggles that my product helped you solve? Um, what was your thought process before you bought my product? What other products like mine did you do you buy? Why did you decide to buy mine instead of that? Where do you grocery shop? What are your favorite books? What shows do you watch on TV? What's your favorite movie? Do you have kids? You can ask them all of these questions to help you get a better picture of who your ideal client is. And when you have your ideal client in your group, they're gonna be passionate about your product, they're gonna be excited to be in your group, and they're going to interact. And so that's gonna help your engagement. You don't want people who aren't interested in your product. Not everyone's gonna like us, and not everyone's gonna to wanna to buy from us. And that's okay, and you have to be okay with that. It's fine, you want your ideal client, you don't wanna waste time with somebody that's way too hard to convince because they're just not really interested. The, and that goes along with having the right people in your group. So you wanna have the right people in your group and that will help your engagement. The next thing is you need to spend about 15 to 20 minutes a day in your group. Now the great thing is Facebook just launched the ability to schedule your posts in your group. Now not everyone has it yet. They are rolling it out. I finally just got it and you should know that I like literally, like I'm not joking, I like jumped up and down and screamed when I got the ability to schedule in groups because I could go on a tangent on this. I don't like schedulers. Um, I like to use the native scheduler. So Facebook released the native scheduler for Facebook groups and I'm so excited for it. But spend 15 to 20 minutes a day additionally in your group. So go in, look at what the conversations are happening, answer questions, interact, you know, spend a little bit of time building that community. Now you wanna be build your community by being a good host, giving them a reason to check in every day. You know, maybe every Monday you post like a motivational, um, like not necessarily a motivational quote because a lot of people do those now, but something that can kind of motivate them for the week or give them something to think about for the week or they know every Tuesday you do a really awesome tip. So give them a reason to come back, give them a reason to be excited to come hang out in that third place, which is your group. Um, provide value, whether it's giving them exclusive deals or, um, you know, teaching them how to use something, you know, really give them value. Maybe even do a Facebook Live where they can ask their most que pressing questions about something and you're the expert. Maybe um, you could, if you know it's wedding season, you could do a Facebook Live and show them how to do wedding makeup or something like that. So um, kind of give them value, give them a reason to come back, keep that engagement going. Um, ask questions. Questions work great and it works bo great both ways because you can kind of garner a little bit more information about your ideal client. I get a lot of ideas for my blog posts and my, um, my social posts on my business page from my Facebook group. It's from the questions that they ask or maybe I'm like kicking around an idea so I'll ask them a question um, and it really garners a lot of great conversation to give me ideas elsewhere and then, you know, they feel heard because I create content around a problem that they actually asked me about. And I'm like, hey, that's a great blog post. I'm gonna write about it and then I'm gonna do a Facebook Live about it, so come on over and join us. So there's a lot of great things that you can do by asking questions. And I really love in Facebook groups, you have the access to the polls function. So you can create a poll where you ask a question and then you give a couple um, options for them to choose from. And I always get really great interaction from those. So try a poll, they're really fun. Um, be consistent. So make sure that, you know, go in there every day or at least every other day so that 
they see that you're there, you see that you're present, and it'll also kind of keep people from spamming. Um, hopefully you're filtering those folks out, but it'll help keep an idea that things aren't getting out of control. And really get to know your group members. Like I know my group members in my group. I know the ones that are the most active. I know about their lives. And I, you know, if I see something that reminds me of them, I'll go back and say, hey, you know what? You asked a question about this and I just saw this thing and it was awesome. So get to know your group members because it's kind of like, you know, a little group that you're having a party with or like a book club um, or a bunko club or whatever. It's a place that they get together. They want to hear from you. They're excited to hear from you. So make sure that you get to know them as well. It's a two way. So it's not just all about you. It's about them and you want them to feel heard and them to feel special. So get to know them. And it'll also help that maybe if there's you know, someone in your group that has an expertise in something else, or maybe you help them solve a problem, you could say, hey, you know what, Monique asked me this question last week, and I gave her this solution. Hey, Monique, do you think you could tell Laura um, how that worked for you or how it went? You can kind of make connections there so people feel like they have a community in your group. And then the last thing that we're gonna talk about is how to grow your group. So the first thing that you wanna do is you want to make sure that you invite your customers and you invite anyone who you have a good touch point with at any touch point. So if you're at an event and someone comes to your table and they're asking a lot of questions about your product and maybe they don't buy and that's okay. You could say, hey, I have this group and you know, maybe she was asking you questions that she really loves to cook vegetables and you're a pampered chef person. And you could say, hey, I have a private group and we all love you know, exchanging all of our best um, veggie side recipes. There's a lot of ideas in there. I would love to have you in that group. Come and join us, give her the link. You know, We're all caring. I just looked for my phone, I'm talking to it. Um, you know, we um, all are carrying our phones at all times. You could say, hey, pull up Facebook real quick and I'll show you how to find it. Um, if you send out an email, you know, put it in the signature, join my Facebook group called this and drive people. So every touch point that you have, you want to remind people that you have a group and ask them to join you in that group. Um, the next thing is you want to um, use Facebook ads. Now you cannot use Facebook ads um, out of your group account. You have to have a Facebook business page and a Facebook business um, ad account in order to run ads, but you can create an ad that, you know, we created an ad for our Marketing for Mompreneurs group that said join um, our group of like-minded direct sellers who like to exchange marketing ideas or something along that. And then I included a link to the group. So you can include a link to your group through an ad that you run through your Facebook business page. Um, you can cross promote. So post on your Facebook, like I cross promoted today that I'm doing a Facebook live on my Facebook business page, but I put a link to our private Facebook group, Marketing for Mompreneurs, in the description of this video. I actually, I also promote the group on Instagram from time to time, or if I do Instagram stories, I will mention it as well, or I'll say, hey, for instance, last week in our private group, Marketing for Mompreneurs, we brainstormed ideas for content for all sorts of different kind of direct sales companies. Come on over and join and you will see all these great content ideas. So you can cross promote in other places for people to come join your group. So maybe somebody follows you on Instagram, they didn't know you had a private group and you can shoot them on over to that. Um, create exclusive deals and content. So like I just said, I did not do the content ideas for the different companies on any of my other platforms. I didn't send an email out about it. Um, the only place that you can find it is in our Marketing for Mom Mompreneurs group. So that is exclusive content to the group. So it gives people a reason to come and join the group. Um, and then just creating consistent and valuable content. You know, that's something that I talk about uh, for your Facebook business page. A lot of our philosophy um, for how you create content for your Facebook business page is going to be the same for your Facebook group. It's just kind of um, a little bit of a different audience and a little bit of a different kind of content, but the philosophy is the same. We actually have a Facebook course called um, the Facebook Formula for Direct Sales Success. And a lot of my students will ask, hey, you know, this is really great for my business page, but everything you teach in here, can I use it for my Facebook group? And my answer is absolutely, because we teach the exact steps and strategies 
on how to grow your business on Facebook and the same things apply to your Facebook group. So um, a lot of the strategies and techniques are things that resonate with both um, sticking to an 80-20 promotional um, content versus helpful content. So you wanna do 80% helpful and valuable content and then only 20% promotional content because let's face it, we don't wanna be sold to all the time. I am much more likely to buy from you if I feel like you're gonna be helpful, um, you've given me lots of valuable tips and I know how to be a better consumer of your product and I know how to use your product than if you're just constantly saying, hey, bye, bye, I have an awesome deal, bye. Um, I want helpful, valuable content instead of just promotional content. So a lot of what we teach works across both. So. That's what I had today for Facebook groups. If you guys have any questions, um, please let me know in the comments. If you found this live helpful, please give us a thumbs up, give us a heart, share it with your team, um, share it with other people you know in direct sales. We would love to have you guys all over here so we can help you grow your direct sales businesses. Like I said, there's a, a link to our private group, Marketing for Mompreneurs in the description of this um, Facebook Live. So you can click on there. You just have to answer one quick question and then you can join our private group. We do a lot of fun um, stuff in there. It's a really great group of women um, that are very supportive of each other. I really love the group. Um, and then we do have a free webinar happening right now that's all about Facebook marketing. Like I said, what we teach for Facebook marketing works for both your business page and your Facebook group. So. Make sure to check out all of those resources. Again, thank you guys so much for joining us today. If you are watching this on the replay, um, feel free to ask questions. I do come back and check the questions and we'll answer you. I will get back to you. Um, I wanna be here for you. I wanna help you guys. So please let us know how we can help you grow your business through Facebook. Thank you for joining us and I hope you have an amazing weekend. Happy Friday, everyone. Bye.